So how should we start? I want, what I want to ask you, how does it feel being the best-selling black British female author? Um, <laughs> Well, obviously, of, of every, adult fiction. every morning I wake up and go, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> so you should, because if it was me, I would do the same exactly. thing. And my husband's always like, yeah, yeah, I don't know who, <laughs> <laughs> who I am, definitely. Um, I don't actually think about it, actually. I'm, I'm very fortunate because I love what I do and I get the chance to be a full-time author and that's always been the dream. So I don't think about that part of it. Mm. I... I like the fact that I'm being successful and my books sell and I get lots of people you know, telling me they like my books and I get to meet people like yeah. you and yeah. people who've come tonight as well. The thing is, I think you're probably one of the most popular people you've ever had because the amount of people have messaged me or just seen me and said, oh, you had Dorothy Coombs at your event, why didn't you tell me? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, Dorothy, do you know, I love Auntie, I, well, they're not saying Auntie Dorothy, I say Auntie Dorothy, but I love Dorothy, I think she's amazing, why didn't you tell me? Like, my mum's friends literally message me on WhatsApp, they never contact me ever to say anything, and they're like, oh, next time um, you have an event with um, Dorothy Coombs, um, could you potentially just save me a ticket? I'm like, they're really, you've oh, got like a you. fan club, the amount of people at the event that we had, um, with you, who are literally just like, it's Dorothy Coombson, it's Dorothy Coombson. Well, so you are just absolutely amazing. You're brilliant. And we're just so proud that we can just be here and having this conversation with you. I'm so excited, guys. It's Dorothy <laughs> Coombson. Like, come oh, on. Thank thank you. There is um, one thing I, I, I wanted to ask you. Um, it was more about kind of the journey and the, and the start. I mean, I know we mentioned it previously for our event we had, but I know that you wrote your first book or your first story when you were quite young. So. I think you always knew this was something you, you wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, I, I've been, I was very fortunate. My um, mum taught me and my siblings to read at a very young age. You know, before we went to nursery, she oh. taught us to read and write. So I was always fortunate and books, very important to us. And, you know, we had, didn't have that many books in our house because we didn't, we couldn't afford them. But we had the library and, you know, libraries are just the lifeblood for yeah. all sorts of people. You get an access to books. And um, so from a very young age, we had access to books. Um, and I loved reading, I loved stories, so I wanted to do, try it out myself. So when I was 13, I, I wrote my first novel, which was great. I, I loved my first novel. What was it about? What it was about? <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> it was, bearing in mind I'm 13 and I've been reading things I shouldn't read, you know. <laughs> you know Jackie, I've been there, yeah. trust Jackie me. Jackie Collins' is Hollywood Wives and all her books, actually, I was just like, you know, I was obsessed. Um, I wrote a book, uh, set in America, I've never been to America, so I just watched it on TV, um, about a girl who, whose mum had left and she had a really sort of tense relationship with her brother, with her dad, and she had a twin brother, and a new guy comes to the school and she had this emotional uh, connection with him, it was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, looking back, it's a great story, I should actually should have told you that because I could have written it in a book, couldn't I? <laughs> Um, so yeah, I wrote that and then I wrote another one um, and I used to pass it around my school friends mm -hmm. every um, morning at school. I used to write a, a chapter a night and then pass it around my school friends wow, who, all, who all, well they seem to like it, they might not have. Um, and it carried on from there. I mean I didn't get published until a lot later but I was always writing, always reading because when you want to write it's really important that you read as mm. well. You read as widely as possible. You read things that you <coughs> want to write. You read stuff that you don't want to write. Um, so you can see how people can tell stories. And that's why I always say to people who want to write, the two main pieces of advice, actually write it mm -hmm. and read a lot as well. So you know what stories are there and what stories aren't being told as well. You say that it was kind of a journey for you being published. Can you talk, talk a bit more about the journey? Yeah, um, well, like I say, I was always writing and I, tried a few times to get pub tried to get published and um had the idea for what became my first book the cupid effect um which is a book about a woman who finds out that she's modern day cupid and she doesn't make people fall in love she actually inspires them to follow their dreams follow their hearts um i was actually writing my second book which is the chocolate run mm -hmm. um when i had the idea for the first one and so i I'd, I'd gone to a weekend for a weekend with my friend in Leeds, and um, where I went to college, and something happened, and I thought, oh, it would be great if I wrote a story about somebody who inspired people to follow their dreams. So I came back to London, wrote the first three chapters, sent it to everybody, as the advice mm -hmm. was then, and got rejected by everybody. The people who replied were just like, 
go away. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what, I believe in this story. I believe in telling Kerry, Kerry's story. So I sat down and I wrote the whole thing. And I sent it out to agents again. And again, they're like, seriously, Coopson, leave us alone. <laughs> <coughs> so I thought, you know what, what I'll do is I'll send it to a publisher. I have nothing to lose. So I sent it to a publisher and um, didn't hear anything back for ages. And then my friend who I'd been visiting Leeds, she came to visit me in London. And um, I was saying to her, oh, I'm going to give up writing, I'm going to give up writing. And she said, I don't think you can do that, can you, Dorothy? And I was like, well, no, I, I'm going to give up trying to get published. So I was lying in bed and um, one morning and thinking, I need a sign. So I was like, God, the universe, whoever's out there, can you give me a sign that I'm meant to carry on trying to get published? or if I'm just going to tell stories. And I used to, at that point I was a journalist and I used to review books for a magazine. And I had a pile of book catalogues this high in my, cat, in my corridor. The postman rang the bell and he said there was too much. This, this package he had was too big to mm -hmm. fit through the door. So, um, so he gave it to me and I felt it was a book catalogue so I just chucked it onto the pile. And I thought actually, do you know what? I just sent my, my book to them, it might be mm -hmm. something. So I opened it and there was a, a letter saying that they wanted to offer me a two book deal. So wow. that was my wow. sign, quite <laughs> a big sign. <laughs> um, so that was, and then, you know, so I had the, that book published and it was like the most amazing thing because I, I know, you know, that is still probably the best moment of my publishing career going up to going to a bookshop in South East London, WH Smith in South East London, and seeing my book with my name on it on the shelves, and then getting on the tube and going up to Borders on Oxford mm -hmm. Street and seeing my book on the shelves with all the other books that, you know, the amount of times I'd gone into the bookshop and stood there and imagining my book there and, and suddenly it was there. And then, you know, the next book came along mm -hmm. and then I, tried to, I wanted to try something else, um, try writing something different, which is my third book, My Best Friend's Girl, and sent that. I changed agents at that point as well, and he sent it out to um, lots of different people, and again, completely rejected. I mean, having had two books published, you think, you know, <coughs> it would be, be plain sailing, but no, I had to. It was again rejected by almost everybody apart from one person who was interested and so I met her. And I remember going up to the meeting and being really nervous and, um, but thinking, I'm sure this is gonna work, I'm sure this is gonna work. And I remember making these ridiculous jokes and you know, you sat, you sat there going, oh my God, please stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> and so obviously didn't put her off. So she offered me a two book deal again and then my best friend's girl was published and that was the beginning of, you know, the next level of mm -hmm. people buying it, seeing tube posters <coughs> and, even now, if I see a tube poster or train poster, I'm always take a picture of me going <laughs> in front of her. You know, I never want to forget how exciting how it, feels, it is. Yeah. yeah, and I never want to forget. I never want to lose that feeling of being really excited mm -hmm. and really pleased to see something I've created out there. So, how would you kind of suggest that other people deal with rejection? Because for you, obviously, you were this amazing author, and like you said, you had these two books. They did well, and then to be rejected by everybody, bar one person. How do you deal with rejection? Um, it's literally a case of, you know, you've got to keep going. If you believe in your story, then that was, that's what's going to carry you through. This is what I say to people as well. Um, a lot of people try and write for money and, you know, seriously, good luck with that. You have to, you have to believe in what you're writing mm -hmm. because when you get rejected, and believe me, I've been rejected by everybody, like I say, the only thing that's going to keep you going, keep you writing and keep you trying is the belief in what you're writing, the belief in the story you want to tell. So you've got to keep going. I mean, it's really hard. It's really hard. And there are some days when it's, it's just, it feels like it's impossible and you think, you know what, I'm going to give up. I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to give up trying to get published. But, you know, just keep going. Just keep going, literally. Okay. Just believe in the story. I mean, sometimes the story you're telling now isn't the story you're, you're supposed to tell. With um, my book, That Girl From Nowhere, um, I started writing it two books earlier mm -hmm. and it just wasn't working, it just wasn't right and so I stopped and I started writing something else and I wrote The Rose Petal Beach which mm -hmm. was um, the story I needed to tell then and then two years later, two books later, I thought, actually do you know what I want to tell? The book I need to tell 
the story I need to tell, the book I need to write is that girl from nowhere. I need to tell that story then. And I learned more about the world and the way I wrote. Um, that girl from nowhere is about a, a girl who's adopted, a black girl who's adopted by two white parents. Um, something happens in her life, so she decides to move from Leeds to move back to Brighton where she was born and then runs into somebody who knows what happened to her birth parents. And um, I learned so much more in that time that I away from it about adoption and how people feel and identity. So I couldn't have told that story at that point. So if, you don't, if you're writing, it doesn't feel right, leave that story for now, mm -hmm. come back to it and write, write something else. Have you ever written something that you wish that you hadn't or kind of you kind of want to That's take it one, back? Actually, yeah. Um, Sometimes I want to take my tweets back, so you know. <laughs> just wondering. I know I'm not on your levels, but just wondering. Yeah, and in life I do want to go control Z to control Z, but you know, you, you can't. Do you know what? Um, I know some people rewrite their books, their earlier books. Um, JK Rowling. <coughs> <coughs> but I wouldn't do that. I don't. I, I, you know, you stand I, by what you've said. I yeah. stand by what I've written, I stand by the story I've told, the characters I've created. I know sometimes with my other books, I wouldn't have written that book in that way because I've learned more about the world. You know, as you go through life, you learn more. So you do more, you know, you can do better. And you can see that things aren't as simplistic as mm. you sometimes thought they were. But, you know, I wouldn't. I so don't you wouldn't want to change the ending of The Brides and Mermaid, you know, change it. <laughs> I'm not being funny. <laughs> But I would be like I need anyway. Sorry, it's not about me. Yeah, you wouldn't want to change. <laughs> you wouldn't want to change, <laughs> change it. it. Satisfy for you. You know, know what? It's funny people. So I can sleep. Brighton Mermaid and Marshmallows for Breakfast are the two endings that people have had real issues with. Um, apparently, you've got issues with the news book. Yes, the ending of that book. But um, I just feel yeah. unfulfilled. <laughs> it, 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 it just wasn't giving me what I needed. I just I, I needed it to be wrapped up really neatly. Do you know what it is? And as nicely. humans, we we want things to be like wrapped up, and we want clarity and we want explanations. So when we get to the end of a book and, and, and it doesn't all add up, like two plus two equals four yeah. to the power of this. Then we're, um, we're just there with the equation and no equals and... I have so many questions. So yeah. I, no, I need to know what happens next. But it, ever... is, but it, is, it is kind of... Um, it's, not, it's not the ending that you wanted, I think, rather than the ending you needed. You needed okay. the ending because, you know, the... Um. Light with Marshmallows, Bright and Mermaid and Tell Me Your Secret, that's the journey they're on and that's okay. the ending they needed, the characters <gasps> needed, okay. not you necessarily. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, okay I'm sorry. sorry. Dorothy, that's fine. <laughs> If, if that's what you believe, it's your book, so, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I'm sorry. Just stand by your story. So, that being said, would you, would you ever consider, if there was one book that you had to write a sequel for, mm. which book would that be? Well, I can't tell you that. Oh, oh. Oh, is it because you might actually write one for Bright Mermaid? I might. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get my answers. Or a prequel, like, Ooh. or in between, like, or from you know a different what? perspective. A prequel. Because, um, not to change that, but Ali Alice Walker had did something similar. Mm. She had The Colour Purple and then she had a book, um, mm. I can't remember the name of it, but I bought you a copy, mm. talking about the experience of um, Celie's adopted children away. Mm. Mm. Exactly. And I was just like, wow, all my questions, question one, question two, question three, question four getting answered. Mm. So maybe, not to tell you what to write <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, maybe, possibly. Maybe, you know, but I'm I just throwing that I'll think out about there. it. I'll yeah. think about it. <laughs> just suggest just, but a lot of my books, though, <laughs> I do have, I do feel that I've, I've put them through enough. I don't want to yeah. put them through enough anymore. You so do, actually, the, the yeah. story needs to, and it, it's, it kind of yeah. And if I wrote it, it would have to be a valid reason for writing it, not um, because to make you, you happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. If, is there a book that you wish you had written? Oh, do you know there are lots of books I wish I'd written. Mm. Um, for more for the story, for the mm. idea. Um, oh, I can't think of anything. I say that. Oh, do you know what? Noughts and Crosses, I, I wish I had written. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I couldn't have written that, you know. I mean, Mallory Blackman, she's just like a goddess. She, she wrote that. You're both goddesses. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, you just scratch. Yeah. And like, so, like, just breaking it, it down, is, um, what is the process? Because you have some amazing ideas, as you've seen in your books, amazing themes. And I think I like the idea that. Um, your characters are black, but it's just seamless. Yeah. It, it, you know, there's sometimes you read books and it's like very, not forced, it just is for what it is, it's kind of in your face. Whereas you, you kind of give 
like slight inf little bits of information that show you what the character is without making what is seen to be stereotypical black culture the center yeah. of that character's behavior so you just have black characters who are normal like me i'm going to work i'm living my life mm. you know i've got my fiance someone might try and murder me do you know what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I really hope someone doesn't try and murder you no but do you know what i mean it, yes. it's, it's just it's not kind of like this is a black book about black women and i actually not that i don't like those books i actually really love that but how do you go through the process of of developing your characters and and your stories well, I, I, when I started telling stories, I wanted to tell stories where the main character was a black woman because I am a black woman. I wanted to, you know, read books about people like me and the fact that we have very ordinary lives and we, we're not always in pain. We're not always yes, being yeah. um, racially abused or, you know, sexually abused. I, we are, have normal lives and that is, the, that is the starting point. Yes, other things, those things happen to us and on a regular basis, but I didn't want it to be the core of my character's yeah. life because it's not the core of my life. And it's not the core of the lives of women I know, you know? We have to deal with those things, but we don't, uh, we're not constantly having to deal with those things. And, you know, and sometimes you do have, you do have them and you have those battles and you, you have those moments. But I wanted to tell stories about people who are normal and that's it. We are normal people. And, yeah. and I remember with, um, when I sent out the Cupid Effect and I had interest on being published, mm -hmm. um, two of the agents who had rejected me had been quite nice. One of them had said, um, I was trying too hard to be funny. And Ooh. the other one had said, oh, she was interested in, you know, kind of very interest, vaguely interested. And if I'd finished it and I was willing to work on it, she'd be interested. So when I had got the publishing deal, I had, um, I sort of thought, oh, I don't know how to negotiate this, so I'll just ring up these agents because I have nothing to lose. And one of them, the second one, she said to come and meet her at her offices. So I went to meet her, and she had an agenda, and I was like, completely freaked out. I was like, no, I just thought it was going to be a chat. And mm -hmm. it was like, you know. And, and one of the things she, that came out in this meeting was that she thought I should put more clues into the book that the character was black. And I was sat there going, right, OK. But why? Mm. So why would I do that then? Because, you know, I don't put clues into my life that I'm black. I don't pick up the phone and go, hello, I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> so why would I do this in my books? You know, I just wanted to, th and, um, and bless her. She had all these like, ideas of how to do this, you know. Okay. <laughs> so she, yes. Was she, she a black woman? No, no, white woman. So no. telling you how to write black characters. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah. I mean, what were the ideas Sarita said? What were the ideas <laughs> what we want to know? Uh, oh, one of them was, um, I don't, probably haven't read The Cupid Effect, but there's a scene in it where she's going through, she's about to start her new job the next day and her best friend comes over and her best friend is saying to her, look, stop worrying about what you're going to wear. And this character, this, um, you, you, you all know you're going to wear a long sleeve top with jeans, so just, let's just get on with it. And this agent said to me, oh, you could, at that scene, you could put in, you could say to her, oh, it looked great with your colouring, but not with mine. And Ooh. I was sat there going, okay, so. What's the long sleeve top got to do with <laughs> the colour? The colour the color of the long sleeve top was good with her against her dark skin. I'm like, really? Okay. okay. Mm. Right, so okay. I'm just going to. Ignore. Ignore. <laughs> <laughs> Delete. I'm going to leave this meeting and see you, and you know. It all worked out for me, didn't it, really? But <laughs> I wonder if she regrets but, saying that. But um, Probably not. I hope so. Mm -hmm. No, but, uh, you know, along the way, I, I keep getting told things like that. Um, I remember when I was sending out my book as well, a few of the agents said, and publishers have said as well, it's about a black woman, but it's not about the black experience. And I don't, I don't know what the black experience is. It's like we're all we're one homogenous here. group. Yeah. Who've got yeah. yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, it's constantly mm. things like that. And do you still get that this now? These kind of comments, would you say? Uh, actually, I hope not. Yeah. No, I, I don't, no not really. No, no. Good. good. No. <laughs> we would have, we would have <laughs> let them. <laughs> we'd have something to say. Yeah. Oh, hold on, we've got more questions on here actually. So, what do you think the current climate is like for Black British women authors and writers? So, what would you kind of say? I think it feels like we're having a bit of a moment at the moment where mm. people are very interested and they're wanting stories told by Black women, and and that's fantastic. I do, you know, it has been a long journey. It has been a long time coming, and you know there have been so many people who've come before 
sort of mm. trailblazers who yeah. who've been yeah. who've been doing it and doing it and haven't had the recognition and probably still don't get the same recognition that they had. But I think it's great. I mean, there's so many people out there. Recently on um, Twitter, I did a thing with some of the. Um, there was a thing in a magazine about yeah. some of the black, black British authors, whose book, female authors whose books were coming out this year, and I did the thing with a few more. And you know, when I was looking for them, it was I didn't have to look very hard for one, which mm -hmm. was great. And there was, and you know, you should check it out because there were so many fantastic books in different genres. And you know, that's the other thing: being a black woman, people expect me to write literary books. They want mm. they want me to have all these beautiful constructed sentences with lots of imagery. And I think I've got that. Mm -hmm. But I like writing popular books. I like reading popular books. Mm -hmm. I like watching popular TV and and films. And I like writing those books. Mm -hmm. And it's been you know, it's been hard to break out of that mould and to do something different mm -hmm. and to do something different in the mould in the the wider mould and the wider world to try to make a crime book, a thriller book about the emotions of the people involved. But you know, it's it's great now that there's so many yeah. black yeah. women being allowed and being it? able to <coughs> have the opportunity to write all sorts of different books. You know, like romance books mm -hmm. and crime yes. books and you know, YA and it's great. I think I think we're very lucky fortunate at this moment and I hope it continues. I and I hope too. all the people coming up, all the young girls out there see that there are people who look like them who are telling mm -hmm. stories, all different types of stories, not just one story about black pain, mm -hmm. about, you know, yeah. about all these awful things that happen to us, but just telling stories about us being normal people, about our normal lives. Do you think on a personal level you've kind of received the recognition that you deserve? Because for me personally, there's so many people that I know who know of you or know of your books, but a lot of the times, I think a lot of my friends didn't even realise that you were black. It was a black woman writing these stories. They just like, oh, Dorothy Kingston, my friends have said to me, read this book, you know, it's a good beach read. And then when I was reading it, I was kind of like... Shakira and Tamika. Yeah, it was Tamika and Shakira, yeah. Yeah, and they and didn't then, give me that book. Because you didn't come on our holiday, yeah. so... Yeah. So we all, yeah, we all had this book. Yeah, that's because you agreed the holiday and then you told me last minute and then you couldn't get me a space. Do you okay, sorry. Okay, Thank cool. You. We'll discuss this later, domestic. But... <laughs> I mean, this is trying to Portugal, yeah? Go on, this, Sorry. Is, this is so good. You end up in a book, you know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Freak, freak, freak. Thing is, <laughs> my introduction to Dorothy was we went on holiday to Portugal and there's this one copy of um, the ice cream, ice cream girls. Ice cream yeah. girls yeah. So we had this and then everyone was reading this book and they were saying to me, oh, you should read it. I was like, no, I only read like Pride and Prejudice, really literary things. I don't want to read it. And I was like, and they're like, okay, fine, don't read it. And then in the end, I was like, everyone was reading it. I was like, I want to read it. I want to get involved. So I read it. I remember literally just reading it in one evening while we were just out like on the balcony. And it was so good. At that point, I didn't know you were a black woman. And I just remember thinking, this is so strange. All the characters are kind of all are black. <laughs> and it, it made, just made, made me click, because usually you read a book and you just sometimes you will assume the characters are white characters. Yeah. And it was the first time I really thought to myself, these characters are black. And because often when my parents gave me books, we knew that the author was a, a black person. Mm. So it was you expected, expected yeah. the characters to be black. With this book, I was like, wow. And it was so well written. And I don't read it and think, oh, why did they say that? Or that was a bit off. No, that wasn't why. And it was just so per perfectly created, the characters, in my opinion. And I remember we did some research afterwards. And we're like, wow, she's a black woman. And I remember so many people have said to me, oh, I love Dorothy Coombson, but I don't feel like you've got the recognition you mm -hmm. deserve. Like, everyone knows J.K. Rowling, yeah, she's a bestseller, blah, 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 but so are you. You know, you walk into W.H. Smith, it's always like Richard and Judy's, you know, top mm. and book, and book which selections, picks, choice, picks, yeah. And it, you, it's you, like, constantly mm. and consistently. So do you feel like you haven't had the recognition that you deserve? I think within our community, there's a lot of people who love you and they mm. adore you. And I think even if you like search your name like on Twitter, so many people are like, oh, Dorothy's new book is coming out. You've really got a big fan club of people, but still like on a mainstream level, despite <laughs> you being a bestseller, do you think you've got the recognition that... Um, like, it's a, it's, a, it's hard to answer that question one, yeah. because I'm very fortunate in mm. that my books are almost always on the best-selling you know, list, best yeah. list and you know my best friend's girl was number two so was um ice cream girls translated into 30 languages yes. so that's kind of recognition <laughs> a bit of recognition <laughs> but yeah, um, so <laughs> and you know it's 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 a weird thing to sort of think about what i deserve because as i said to you i for me i have the best job in the world yes and i get to do it every day mm. and you know, and, I, and I, part of my job is meeting people and, you know, talking to people like you. So recognition, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's something that's 
as important to me as yes. my books selling, selling you know, and, and, well. yeah, yeah. and being in shops and people reading them and enjoying the story and telling me, you know, the best thing is when people email me and say, you know, your books really helped me, mm -hmm. your books helped me make sense of something that happened to me or, you know, your books have opened up a whole new world to mm -hmm. me and it's got me to, into reading yeah. and, you know, so that's... I think, I think you're right because I kind of feel like you can get all the recognition in the world, be in all the magazines, if people aren't buying your books, then you know, something isn't right. I yeah. think for you, you know that your books are epic. You know, we know your books are epic. Thank you. And because they are, they're genuinely they are. amazing. And I think even despite if you're not on the front cover of a Vogue magazine or whatever, you are on the top best-selling list and that's yes, just and what you're doing. And, that, and that's it. Don't lie. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Don't lie. Yeah, and, it's, it, it, and you know, and every book you write, the next book it could go horribly wrong. So you always remember. Well, not for you. I don't, I don't, well, I don't think, yeah. I, don't, I don't see, Touch I don't see that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's why I, when I say to people, when, you know, when you're writing, you always have to try your best with yes. it. With, you know, people might not like the book, but mm. I know that when it's sent out there, when it's on the shelf, I did the best I could mm. at that point. You know, I put all my heart and soul into every single book I've written. Mm. And, <coughs> and that's... You well, know. As Natalie said, numbers don't lie. So there you go. Yes. Thank you. Do you have any tips for upcoming writers? Yes, as I said to you, just write it. Mm. Because, you know, people will... What stops people from writing is often they won't have time and it's hard to carve out time. Mm. When I was first trying to get published, um, I used to write on the train to work. So okay. I used to sit on the train with my pen and paper doing, doing that. Um, um, and also one of the big things is people worry about what their mum's going to think, their pastor's <laughs> going to think, their, you know, the their great aunt. Their great <laughs> aunt. And I always say to people, you know what, those are worries for people who've been published. Until you got it published, it doesn't matter because well, no one has to see it. So write it as though no one's going to read it. Write the best story you can and then worry about it when you're published and you know, you've got your book launch and you, you're on the bestseller list and then you worry about what your mum's <laughs> going to say and then you know, your great art Maud's going to say. If you just did text in the family WhatsApp group, please do not purchase. Yeah, Thanks. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> please do not read. Just, just, don't, just don't go there. But um, yeah, so actually just sit down and sit down and write. That's the most important thing. Just sit down. You don't have to start from the beginning because I don't start from the beginning and people are often horrified that I don't sit yeah. there. No, I don't. Really? I don't at all. I well, tell us more about your writing process. Well, this is why I don't get writer's block. A, because, you know, if I worked in a shop, I wouldn't go, I can't scan today. I've got, I've got scanner's block. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, this is my job and I, I, I need to do due diligence yeah. block. Yeah. You can't do due diligence <laughs> at work. Exactly. I'm going to try that it's tomorrow. Right, yeah. And see, you know, and it is my job, and it's something I have to work out, and I have to do. Mm -hmm. And also, um, if something's not working, I will go and write some another part of it. So I sometimes start in the middle of the story. Mm -hmm. I sometimes start at the end. I sometimes start mm -hmm. at the beginning. It depends where the story, what what scenes and conversations mm -hmm. have come into my head. Um, I'll put them down on paper, and then I'll keep adding to it, doing research, and that research will often informs where the story goes yeah. and what direction it takes. And then once I've got as much as I can, then I will go back from the beginning and then start writing it. I'll also write a load of things that need to happen on this on a post-it note and stick it on a wall and okay. see. Yeah, that's a good idea. What. Natalie does stuff like that. Yeah, I love, yeah. I love a post-it note. I love a post-it note, me too. <laughs> I love post-it note. Post-it and a Sharpie. <laughs> Best things in the world. <laughs> That is the perfect combo. Yeah. Sharpie as well. <laughs> Sharpie and a oh, post-it note. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I have different um, colours for different characters. Do you have different colour post-it notes? Yeah, for different characters. Oh yeah. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I tell her about the colour code with my... Sorry, it's not about me. I just love it. I'm very interested in your post-it no, notes. No, I do. And I, I bought um, a pack of post-its from Rhyme and they do like 16 different colours. Yeah. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm doing? It's so good. And then with the Sharpie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. No, it's really nice. And then it looks really colourful as well. Yes, it does. And, and also, when, when you do that, you stick it on a board, all the things that have happened to each character in different colours, you can see instantly who's got too much story, who hasn't got enough ah, story. Yeah. And okay. then you move it around and then That's you move it around again. Tip. Or you do what I did with the Flavors of Love, and I wrote stuff at the end. And um, then I, when I went back to the beginning, and I, as I was writing, I was like, oh no, the ending's not going to work. 
Like a million <laughs> people go, so if this was a situation, da, 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 would they do this? And, no. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> so I had to unpick everything that oh. the ending. Just serves me right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to go back and rewrite all that bit. So, yeah, I don't mm -hmm. start in order. So, you know, don't worry about a blank page and having to start at chapter okay. one. Start wherever you need to. I was thinking, like, I think you're quite prolific because last year we had the Brighton Mermaids. So I was like, okay, two year gap, three year gap. No. And you just go, oh, Next tell year. me your secret, here you go. When well, I saw the book, I was like, wow, okay. I was like, how? 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 Right? how is she doing this? But yeah, it's, again, it's, like I can say, it's my job. I know yeah. I've got to sort of, some of it feels a bit fantasy like. Yeah. And I love my job, mm -hmm. and, but it's still a job, and I need to keep producing books and telling stories and, you know. Pay my mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> do you kind of like clock off? Because if you could see it as a job, do you kind of think to yourself, okay, it's five o'clock, that's it, no more writing? No, no, it doesn't no? work like that. No, okay. not in that sense. I, I mean, I have to work to a deadline and mm. I mostly hit my deadline. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting at my editor's over there. So um, <laughs> I'm sitting there going, yeah, I mostly hit my deadline thinking, did I, did I uh, extend it this time or not? <laughs> um, I think I got it right on time, almost. I'm not looking over there. I'm not looking at her because <laughs> I don't want her to, to go, no, you didn't, Dorothy. Um, no, I don't clock off. It's, it's um, when I'm at the beginning of it, I will be doing more research than writing. So okay. I'll be that's talking to people, reading, researching. And then as the deadline gets nearer, I will do more writing and less research. And then it gets to the point where there's no research and it's just writing. Mm -hmm. So I will have to, you know, sometimes I'll stay up all night and... Um, to finish it or I'll sort of start just work until one o'clock in the morning then wow. go to sleep for two hours and wake up and start again because um, I need to get it done yeah. I need to sort of um, I used to write in bed a lot which I, I can't do now yeah. um, I messed up my back so oh, now I have yeah, a proper yeah. desk I mean, there's a, a sit stand desk so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, sometimes yeah. you yeah. stand to relieve yeah. the pressure off your back but it's, it's funny when you especially in the earlier days when I used to have um, if you birds, you know, you'd be working all night and suddenly you'd be like four o'clock and it's the, <laughs> the birds would be like, oh my goodness, it's that time, is it? Um, but yeah, no, so I don't clock off in that sense, but I do see as sure I do, job. yeah. So what do you do for self-care? Because if you're working like to one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock and you're sleeping for two hours, how do you look after yourself? Um, well, recently I've started having long soaks in the bath. Mm -hmm. I've got um, candles and radio Ooh, and, nice. you know, look at you. and a book now <laughs> and, and I sort of lie in the bath for ages. Um, I don't know, I, I probably don't do as much self-care as I should, but... Um, Can I ask what you're reading right now? What I'm reading right now? Um, <laughs> I'm actually rereading um, The Woman Loved Before one of my books because I just thought, <laughs> I felt it was time to revisit um, oh, well. That's Jack like and Libby. <laughs> That's such like a Mariah Carey you thing. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I was rereading re re one of my, the, my own, own, you know, my own, my old Mariah bestseller, Mariah. you know, the other one. Yeah, just see you in the bar with the bubbles and the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's, that's a shock. <laughs> I don't remember writing that. Oh. No, I actually, no, so I wanted to, because um, sometimes I think about my characters and I want to, and I sort of think, oh, I want to read that bit again to see how I told that bit of the story and, you know, what happened with Libby and Jack and, you know, how that all panned out. Even though I know how it panned out, I kind of want to see oh. it again, read it again. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. I don't always just only read my own books. <laughs> I have to tell you, I have to say this. <laughs> Just at the moment. I just want to see Libby and Jack again. To, to read, read your bestseller, yeah. that's, that's amazing. That sounds really weird now, doesn't it? <laughs> I, <laughs> I think it's quite cool. I think it's cool. If I had not. a bestseller, I'd be reading it every day, exactly. just on the train, turning my pages, let everyone see the cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was doing that on the way here. <laughs> Yes, it's me. This is my book. My my book. book. I'm like, hello. Yeah, have you read this book? I wrote this book. Yeah. It's bestseller. Really yeah, good. it's my Should book. Read it. And then get the Here's a copy. Yeah. Yeah, I've had twelve ninety nine, yeah. please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm slightly mad though, so don't don't follow me. What was it? What's your favourite book? Oh, I can't I can't tell you that because it changes over time, oh, and yeah. as you you know, as I said, you know, as you you change, yeah. what you like changes, and mm. some of the things that you know. One of my favourite books when I was um, a lot younger was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Oh, I've never heard of this. Is it and good? It's, it's a great book. You know, it's about a mm. woman, um, who, a second wife. Ooh. She comes, um, she meets this guy and she has a very whirlwind romance, moves into his house and then discovers that 
his first wife died under mysterious circumstances. Oh, damn. Sounding very similar, familiar. Um, <laughs> so she, um, so then she discovers that he might have murdered her or he might not have murdered her. Oh, or, and there's all these really sort of this mm -hmm. motley crew of characters. I used to love that book. And then I wrote The Ice Cream Girls, which is about abusive relationships and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I can't read Rebecca again because, you know, mm -hmm. having loved Max the Winter, I suspect if I read it again, he's going to be a completely, yeah. I'll be uh, a yeah, completely yeah, yeah. different reading of that book. Mm -hmm. So I, so I, you know, so yeah, like yeah. all these books I loved, I can't, a lot of them I can't access now because yeah. I know more about the world. Problematic. Yeah. Problem problematic yes. okay. That's like when I reread Waiting to Excel and then like, I nearly had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> and I know it feels. Cause that's it's like, that's one of my favourite books, but no, like... Uh. I was reading it like, at 16, I was like, oh, their life's just so juicy. And reading it as a 30-year-old, I was like, wow, this is sad and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm close to an age to these women, it's not funny. So, like, I know exactly how that feels. Is there a book that you would suggest that a young black woman reads that you think would kind of like, uplift her? Uplift her? Oh. Oh, that's an interesting, interesting question. I can't think of one at the moment. Um, what is interesting, reading... I mean, some of the other, Mallory's other book, Mallory mm. Blackman's, I say like mm. I know her, <laughs> my best mate. <laughs> they're actually very inspiring and you know, they are written by, by a woman who has been through a lot, you know, who has, who's been in many places and on a real journey. Um, I don't know, I can't, I can't think at this moment, because, mm. you know, obviously Michelle Obama's book is... Yeah. It's quite that inspiring, is, but yeah. there's a lot of stuff in there that I don't, I don't know if young girls are ready for that much yeah. information yeah, and that yeah. much, and to be told, you know, that you're going to be judged on so many different levels yeah. and, and such, such a different extent it to other people. Upli uplift no, yeah, not uplift them, no. So, you know, I think reading, I think reading broadly is, is mm. a very good thing to do. So, and like I say, there are so many opportunities to read books by black women out there yeah. now. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm. Guys, don't hey. be shy. Hi, um, my name's Tegan. Hello. Hi. Oh, Tegan. Hi, Tegan. <laughs> my best friend's girl character. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just going to ask, have you ever considered adapting your books for screen and film yourself? Because I know you've had um, TV adaptations, but would you ever consider like taking that time on to adapt your own work into like a film or something? Yeah, I, I do keep thinking I'm going to uh, a write a screenplay or a, you know adapt one of my books for for the screen but I, I never get around to it really so yes I would consider it and also you know there's the stage as well I mean theatre that would yeah. be a, a great thing I did um, I was thinking about one of my books actually doing a play or talking to somebody about mm. adapting it for the stage. You look really excited about that. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more. I'm not going to tell you which book. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find out when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would. It's, it's something I'd, I'd like to do. Yes, yeah, so yes is a short answer, but obviously you can't get a Dorothy answer. It's not a short answer. So yes, I. but it's one of those things I have to sit myself down and do it because mm -hmm. I always find so many other things to do with my time as well. Could you imagine if they did like a three-part Brighton Mermaid on Netflix? Ah, oh my that'd God. Be <laughs> that'd be sick. That'd be epic. Anyway, I just want to put that out there in the atmosphere. <laughs> Throw it out there. Throw it out there. there. Any other questions? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about like, where your love for writing kind of came from and like, how it grew? Yeah, it was, it was mainly from my, I think, well, I think it was from my, my mum mainly um, teaching us to read from such a long age, young age and write as well. Having said that, none of my siblings have gone on to be writers. Um, <laughs> so, but I, I just love the idea. I mean, I spend a lot of time daydreaming and going, what if, what if this, what if that? So, and the other day, my husband, we were t talking about something. We were walking down a road and something was happening. And I sort of like, you know, passed it by, you know, mentioned it and sort of looked at it and then <coughs> carried on. And my husband starts going, do you think that this is what's going to happen and this is that person, this is why they are doing it? And I looked at him and I went, you've been married to me for too long. <laughs> 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 because he is there now. <laughs> he, he can't see anything sort of like in a completely uh, sort of flat way now. Everything has got to have all these motivations and subplots and stuff now. <laughs> um, so I think it's part, it's just my imagination. I, I always was a daydreamer. I always, like, you know, 
imagining things and what if this happened and what if this happened and and that's how the books come from ideas you know they start off with an idea and then what if this what if this what if this so um, so it's, it's always been a love of reading and wanting to do what I what I loved what I loved Uh, not really. No, I didn't have encouraging teachers. I mean, I I didn't have teachers who put me down or anything. So I was, I was very fortunate. My teachers were just my teachers. They were there, you know, and they taught me stuff. I did used to write um, passages sometimes in English. I remember writing a thing about a, des uh, a desert island this passage about Desert Island, I remember reading it to my mum and my sister, and making them sit down and listen to this thing I'd written. <laughs> and, and then at the end of it, I went, and... Oh. <laughs> and, I was like, and I was like, but, but didn't you see the beauty <laughs> in my words? I didn't say that, but you know, I was, I was a bit, but, but I've always wanted to do that. I've always wanted to tell these stories and write stuff and, get, and create things in people's mind, you know, get people to imagine with me, I suppose. I think that's part of it, wanting people to imagine along with me yeah. the, the lives of these people and characters that I've created. Do you remember the first book you ever read? I, I don't remember the first book I ever read, but I remember reading a lot of books. I used to go to the library every night after school, on the way home from school, so, and I used to just pick up all these stories. I used to read fairy tales. I read a book on how to, um, on grammar, on how, so I taught myself grammar. I read a book on how to get published and how you, the most important thing is to grab people in the first three pages. So no matter what you write, the first three pages are when you will grab the reader. So that's why I was trying to make sure that my prologues are, or the first page is just something that they won't be able to put down. I remember reading um, Secret Garden, Little Princess. Mm all the Jackie Collins books. Me and my friends used to get them out from the library and then pass them around to each other. Mm -hmm. I used to read comics. I used to read 2000 AD. I used to read Bunty, Tammy, Jackie, all those, Blue Jeans, all those things. I used to read a lot. I used mm -hmm. to read a lot, which is why I was saying the library is like made me the person I am because without that, you could, couldn't afford it all that. So um, I don't remember the first book I read, but I remember reading a lot of books. Ah, uh, that's, that's a good, a good question. question. And sorry, and the language question. Language. Oh, um, so the well, the enjoyable and draining. The book that was. See, I enjoy writing all my books. I mean, I am I am drained at the end of them. When I finished <laughs> writing *When I Was Invisible*, my husband said to me, "I mean, you know, he he comes in in the morning, and I come out of my office, and I've got my hairs out there, and <laughs> you know, I've got I've got this baggy T-shirt on and this cardigan, and my my." leggings are up here and you know <laughs> got socks on he, he's like uh, you're a vision of loveliness <laughs> <laughs> but he, uh, he said to me when I, after when I was invisible that he said I've never seen you so broken as you are oh. but this book you know it was a harrowing book and it was a difficult time in my life in general but so that was but I still enjoyed it I still loved it and I still love my characters and I still love telling that story and like I said to you I'm very fortunate. I love all my, um, all my stories. I love what I do. Probably the, the freest I've been is when I wrote The Cupid Effect because I wasn't writing it, wasn't trying to get published. I wasn't, it was nothing. There was, mm -hmm. It was just there to tell a story. I had no expectations. I had no readers. So it was just like the book I wrote to tell the story. And probably, the, I mean, it's my first one, so probably the f most fun I've had. But I do love all my books, and I have <laughs> loved creating all of them. I have to say that as well. I will say thank you, everybody, for coming. And a big thank round of applause you. to our darling Auntie Dorothy. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. And thank you.